Hi there guys, how's it going? In this video, I'm gonna be trying to take you through start to finish, how to make a beautiful planetary capture. Uh, we're gonna be actually going after tonight, Jupiter, and just up there, probably off frame for you, <laughs> Mars. Uh, that's the two targets that we're gonna go after. I will be using SharpCap Pro for the planetary live stacking features. That's how I like to do all of my planetary work these days. And the rig that we're using is the one right here on camera, the very, bright looking thing that's covered in uh, foil bubble wrap for, uh, for thermal properties that it offers. The Skywatcher Skymax 180, it's a really beautiful planetary telescope. I've really enjoyed it to be honest with you and I'd recommend one of these to anybody looking at getting started in some real serious planetary work. Uh, I've got that paired up with a very small pixel pitch camera, the ASI 676MC, that's got two micron pixels which should give us quite a nice sampling ratio using this telescope when just used natively. However, if the scene conditions are a little bit better than they look, they don't look too great, um, we could also try it maybe with a two times Barlow and see what the difference is there as well. But this is my chosen rig. I really enjoy this thing because of its kind of grab and go nature. And I'd really, hand on heart, I'd love to share this with some more of you guys out there and get you to go out and give this sort of thing a go with your own rigs. Whatever you may have, it's always worth a try, uh, this kind of thing, before those planets go out of season and you have to wait to see them again. At least that's how it is up here. So, as I said, there's really been no preparation done whatsoever. In terms of alignment, all I've done is just put the tripod down, the uh, the scope on it and pointed it just by looking up the tube towards Polaris. So I know it's roughly pointed north. The only true preparation that was done is uh, just making sure that my finder scope, which is on the side, I'll be looking through that visually to find targets as there's gonna be no plate solving, etc. tonight. Um, for me, it's all gonna be manual. All I've made, done is make sure that that's co-aligned with the main scope. So that once I've got something in the crosshairs in that, it should be on the screen on the laptop. So I've got both recording at once. Let's dive in after that very wordy intro uh, and see if we can get connected up to this camera. So there it is, the 676. Now this is a fresh install of Sharp Camp, so it should be all completely defaults. Uh, can't see anything on the screen just yet, but I'm not gonna fret about that at this particular moment in time. So the first thing I wanna do is grab my hand controller. If you do have plate solving set up, feel free to use it. A sharp cap can do that. But for me, it's gonna be a case of using this thing, making sure we turn fast mode on and tracking enabled. And now if I just figure out which direction I need to go, so it's gonna be down and right as it happens on my joystick to get it to point up towards Jupiter, just up there. So once we're close, we start looking up the side of the tube for very, very rough alignment. And we should be getting close. It should be in the field of view of my finder scope, which I can look through now. And just nudge it into view. And hopefully, yeah, sure enough, there on the, uh, the laptop screen, we have Jupiter now. I can see my screen and the, uh, the view across through the finder scope at the same time. So I can just go ahead and make a small tweak to the alignment of this. I wish I could share that part with you, but that'll make the next steps easier whenever we're trying to refine another target on another night. But close apparently is good enough. Now the next difficult thing is traditionally going to be finding focus on this kind of rig. So uh, to make that easier, I'm going to use one of these batting of masks that I make and print and sell all over the world really. Um, shameless self plug, but it is what it is. I find it's a great way to focus on planets. Now I am going to try and move to around this side away from the front of the telescope as heat's going to be escaping my clothing causing plumes to rise in front of the telescope and disturbing our view of this beautiful planet. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and pop my uh, Binov mask on the end. Turn this to where I can see the screen. And now I need to go and man the focuser. <laughs> so 
we're a few minutes in, I realise at this point. I'm going to have to turn up the gain to the point where we can start to see diffra uh, diffraction spikes being caused on the moons as well as on Jupiter itself. Now we don't want to try and focus on the planet, but hopefully you can see those spikes that are being cast by the moons right there and not perfectly aligned. Whereas now, that's in focus straight away. So there's no guesswork involved. That's focused. That took moments. I'll come back around here, so uh, for the sake of <laughs> the recording. Uh, and let's try now and drop down our exposure. So I probably want to go with something like, I feel like a 10 millisecond capture and make the gain match from there. So uh, that's looking, I would say, pretty darn steady as it happens. Just gonna nudge the, uh, the scope. I like the look of that. And now we can click the little Jupiter icon just up there to start lunar, solar, planetary live stacking and start to dial in these settings. So I probably want a, I guess a 300 stack, which is probably enough. Gonna also adjust brightness and color and give us quite a big zoom. Oops, that is too much Luke. So now we can start to see what's going on on the screen. Now, you can start to sharpen this thing by using these different sliders right here. So if you give a go on the fine, have a look at the effect, reset, wavelet level one, okay, not bad. Reset, wavelet level two. Now that's having more of an effect for me, to my eyes. I think we're bringing out a lot more cloud band detail with that one. Uh, level three right there. It's perhaps adding too much overall contrast. It's beginning to look a bit strange. So I reckon a combination of wavelet one and two is where we're gonna to wanna to be. Now you'll notice, of course, this has introduced some noise to the image. So don't be afraid to use the denoise feature to get rid of that. And now if we go a little bit further in as well, only add the best frames to the stack so we can start to filter things out. Now we've got sort of dialed in. I'm gonna say only add the best 50% of frames and it'll average these out over your rolling stack size. You can choose to do time lapses from here and things like that if you should wish. My hands are freezing by the way. We can choose to realign color channels. I would absolutely do that. As I said, this is a completely fresh install. So, uh, here we go, stabilize to the center. We do want that, I would say. So we're gonna tra track the planet with the sharp gap selection area. We can indeed track with ROI if we should wish. So if I make a smaller region of interest, say 1776 right there, I'll just make sure we're centered up once again as this planet's likely to drift a lot as we made no special effort to align. Now we are ready to actually try and make a capture in earnest after that basic setup. So this time it's centered. We can hit go. And over the course of the next few moments, it should start to make quite a beautiful image, I would say. And there we have it. That's starting to look really nice, I would say probably stand a little bit more of that level two wavelet. Hopefully this is coming through for you guys. Uh, I don't know exactly how many minutes into this we are, but it's not long. And we've already got a really nice shot of Jupiter on the screen, I would say. I'm very pleased with that. Now you can go ahead at this point and choose to save this however you would like. Um, I think it, it's arguable that if you want to do stuff like, you know, time lapses and whatnot, you are probably going to need a bit more of an involved setup than I've got right here, uh, as it's going to just drift away without any polar alignment effort or perhaps auto guiding on one of those moons or something like that. That'd make things work a lot better. 
but overall I'm very very impressed with that and we've already made one capture so I'm just going to go ahead save once more that looks good to me these these have been captured now and saved for me I'll cancel that zoom we'll switch back to the full region of interest so that when we're trying to land now on Mars we'll have an easier time getting it in shot all right guys so I've got to say I'm pretty happy with that Jupiter capture I'm going to now go ahead try to manually slew to Mars and uh, see how that goes for us so you have to come back around this side of the scope <laughs> apologies for how uh, perhaps strange this must appear given most of you out there are likely used to doing this kind of thing um, just using you know computer based plate solves and that sort of uh, thing but it does work quite well and it should be pretty quick all things considered so I think I'm close just looking at the side of the tube now this is one disadvantage you've got to almost be a contortionist at times uh, to look through one of these guide scopes so I definitely can't recommend it for everybody just universally I think we're just about on Mars there and sure enough on the screen Mars <laughs> as easy as that now then let's turn down the uh, the slew speed get ourselves just about centered if you have trouble by the way figuring out where center is you can always use the crosshair on the screen right there uh, a reticle gonna drop down that region of interest once again close enough to center there that it doesn't really matter now it looks like for Mars we could really do with dropping down again and sure enough would you look at that I don't know if this is coming through for you guys but you can see the polar cap of Mars there's dark like you know regions of desert and things like that on its surface it looks absolutely phenomenal I, I love this kind of thing so let's go ahead now and kick off a live stack on this beautiful beautiful target let's let this thing get itself aligned a good bit it seems to be having a little bit of trouble aligning RGB tonight on this I think it's getting there but it's not doing a wonderful job so I'm going to turn off real line color channels as I just figured it was working better without now I can definitely see at least I can see on my screen a ring like a halo effect around Mars right there which is uh, obviously not what we want to see so these wavelets that we used prior for Jupiter and not the sort of same ones we want to apply in this case so let's just reset those two take it back can auto adjust the brightness and color once again I think it's going to need a bit more saturation that's probably looking pretty good you can certainly see those polar regions popping up just at the top right there that's wonderful now if we try first off with the fine detail slider that's doing a really really good job on this target it you know it was less so on Jupiter it really didn't work that well but here that's working wonderfully I'm just going to reset for a moment so we can see what wavelets alone look like so wavelet level 1 I'm going to say that's quite hard to balance wavelet level 2 that's working a combination of 1 and 2 doesn't look bad at all but I'll be honest with you for my tastes you could feel free to experiment with this of course but for me on this target just give me that fine slider I think that looks absolutely out of this world I, I absolutely love planetary on nights like this would you look at the detail on display there so I'm going to go ahead save that as is I'm going to make sure I can save more than just one as well just in case anything's wrong with that whatsoever I don't think there will be but you know there's always that chance uh, and now that we've made a good capture on Mars I'm very very happy with that you could even by the way make use of these by going to save settings 
and save these so you know i might know that i want to save number two as my eyes and i should have saved number one back on jupiter but it will vary night by night as to what you can get away with anyway so i think it has it's useful but it has limited usefulness <laughs> at least in my uh in my view all right then guys so we're on jupiter we're in focus i shouldn't hopefully be putting too much heat plumes in front of this telescope i think we want to go with maybe i don't know 350 gain maybe 400 actually looking at this so uh, before i get started in the live stack i'm going to make a whoops <laughs> a small adjustment to get things centered up as much as i can as i say we know we're in focus so uh, you can just go ahead and hit stack now as i mentioned before you're going to want to go ahead and change um, your settings for this for per target basically on, on that per target basis boost up the uh, the view size to the point where we can see what's going on now in this case let's try the fine slider we're not seeing much wavelet one is also lacking usefulness wavelet two it's doing more of a job but it's not great Wavelet 3, I'm seeing more of a change there. And we 4 applied also. That is perhaps more promising overall. Um, I will say, I think this immediately highlights the, uh, you know, the importance of proper sampling because even though the image is much bigger on the screen, I don't think it's necessarily any better. So, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to say that tonight can't support that Barlow. It really doesn't seem to be adding anything to the uh, the experience for me. So, with that, anyway, what better time before I freeze to death to wrap things up? And I just want to say I hope that you found this interesting, maybe a little bit inspiring, and you want to give this kind of thing a go. If so, leave a comment. Let me know how it went for you. I'd love to hear. Uh, yeah, I really would. But that is, that's honestly about all I can take. I'm turning to an icicle, so I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much indeed to everybody who watches my videos. It really does mean the world to me that you give you support in the ways that you do. Uh, a huge thank you to all my Patreons and YouTube members, as well as people who donate directly to keeping this whole thing going. So, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in a future video, hopefully. <laughs> Please let the next one be inside the observatory because it's freezing out here. Look after yourselves, guys, and clear skies.